American tourists spoke out in a shocking revelation claiming that their dream vacation in the country turned into a nightmare. What do you want people yes. to know? I want people to be safe. And um, two is not enough. Don Gala and I thought as best friends, you know, the two of us, we've been together for two decades. We thought that we could protect each other and to be safe. And it's just, it's not enough. The, the place at the center of the allegations is purporting that the alleged victims' accounts conflicts with their camera footage. You need to stay within those bounds. You shouldn't take any excursions that aren't directly with the resort you're booking, aren't directly with the cruise line that you're booking. There's no chance. I've seen it. There's no chance that anything was made up. Since nobody in the mainstream press is going to say it, I'm going to say it right here. Absolutely somebody's telling a lie. Now, who's lying and what is their motive for lying? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And if an open conversation is something you prefer, then this is the place for you. Welcome to the point. So let's talk about it. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Now, the story that's circling the mainstream press in the States is that Amber and Don Gaylor were enjoying their very first kid-free vacation, and when their ship docked in the Bahamas, they took a taxi cab to a local resort where they would enjoy a day out on the beach. And it's after they received this drink is where the story starts to get a little fuzzy, because they make this statement right here on Como. You say you guys were offered a drink, buy one, get one free. It was the only drink yes. that you had. Uh, and there's a yes. picture of you guys on the beach enjoying yourselves. You're saying that this cut out pineapple thing, this was the drink. You had one drink. It was this drink. And what happened so, after you had it? I had the coconut and Don Gala had the pineapple and we were offered a two for one deal. And with as expensive as everything else was, we were like, OK, we we're catching a break. We'll do the two for one deal. Um, we felt the drinks were really strong, but Don Gala and I are both gastric sleeve patients, so our stomachs can't tolerate much, so we don't drink often anyways. Less than a few drinks into the second drink, we less than a few drinks into the second drink, we knew something was wrong. And our family and our friends are messaging us concerned about us, like, are you sure? That you only had one drink is that all we, when we got back to carnival cruise line we were given toxicology tests and a breathalyzer i blew zero point zero 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 i blew zero point zero zero six now one of the reasons people are thinking that they're not telling the truth is they contradict themselves in this interview they are clearly asked did they have one drink and they acknowledge yes and then it's quickly followed by another statement that after a couple of drinks, they started to notice something. But then when they took a breathalyzer, one of them blew all zeros and the other blew a .006. And that would indicate absolutely no drinking. And what makes that story a little bit more unbelievable is this social media post right here. Now, of course, we are not on this channel outright accusing anybody of lying. And it may be within that post they were telling a little bit of a fib. What is alarming within the toxicology they took on the cruise ship, they found benzos in their system as well as some other substances. And to them, that is shocking. That is not something they would do. But they do go on to say that they were denied the appropriate level of medical treatment that they weren't offered any type of kit on the island and that they had to use the bathroom into toilet paper and that was what the authorities were going to use to determine if they were essayed. But now the resort and the Bahamian police have came out with this statement right here. Well, the Royal Bahamas Police Force also releasing a statement late Wednesday evening. The police report adding that the victims declined medical assistance but were provided with a separate kit and a hospital form by the police. The police statement adds emergency medical services offered medical assistance to the victims, which they declined, signing a waiver and then leaving for their cruise ship in a private vehicle. The statement goes on to say that recognizing the gravity of the incident, our officers boarded the cruise ship providing a 
and hospital form to the ship's medical doctor and obtained signed statements from the victims. The Royal Bahamas Police Force is collaborating closely with the FBI in this ongoing investigation as two Bahamian men aged 54 and 40 are still currently in police custody. So I would wonder from y'all, were they denied treatment here? Or was it that they just refused treatment? This could also be a situation where they were misinterpreting the type of care they would receive. Now, this is the Bahamas. This is not the United States. And their health care procedures could very well be completely different to what you would receive in the States. And at that point, they decided, screw this, we're out. We're getting on the cruise ship so we can get some help. Not only that, their story is when they went on the beach, they wanted to find some seashells. And they ran into a member of the staff who decided to tell them where those seashells would be located. And that is where this incident would take place. But the resort has made this statement right here. And as upon further review of the surveillance videos, the allegations made on site and in subsequent social media posts and news stories conflict with what the timestamp surveillance videos contain. As such, the lengthy videos of all concerned have been handed over to the local police and will be shared with our industry partners as needed. While there is an active police investigation into these serious allegations, we have terminated the employment of the two accused as the behavior seen on tape by management indicates that at minimum they violated our zero tolerance policy. We strongly encourage all concerned parties to make sure all facts are considered before reaching a conclusion. Pirates Cove can confirm from their 16 cameras on property that the women entered their property at 8.17 a.m. were greeted by their staff at 8.24 a.m. One of the ladies met with one of the accused at 9.40 a.m. and by 10.06 were seen walking side by side toward the western side of the beach where the alleged incident took place. So according to the resort, the footage they see doesn't line up with what they were told. And the amount of backlash both of these women have received online has been absolutely insane in my own opinion. In fact, I haven't seen the general public who follows these types of stories make statements like this since the Casey Anthony trial. It does appear like there are a whole lot of people who just don't believe what either of these two are saying. Well, there was a nurse who was in the area during the time of this whole incident, and she gives this statement right here. There's no chance. I've seen it. There's no chance that anything was made up. You can't make up puking everywhere and shaking all over and trembling and being scared to death. You can't make that up. Not a thing like that. That's not something you can just make up. Now, in terms of this story, this nurse doesn't have a dog in the fight. She was just there to help them when the people at the resort found out she was a nurse. So why would she be telling a lie? According to her, these women were visibly shook, nauseous, and asking for help. Now, another story that offers a little bit of credence to what... Golly... Now, another story that offers a little bit of credence to what they are saying is back in January, an 80-year-old Alzheimer's woman who was on a cruise with her daughter was also subjugated to this same type of attack. And it would be a federal agent who was at the Bahamas during the time of this incident who would come to her aid, help her, and help detain the person that did it. But now that all these stories are jumbled, who are you believing here? Are these two women lying? Is this a scenario where these two women have absolutely fabricated a story? And the possibilities or reasons they would fabricate a story like this are endless. Maybe one of them had decided to cheat on their husband while they were over there. Maybe they're telling this story because they're trying to get money. Waiting on the plane. Look how red my ear is. Boy, my blood pressure's up. Because a lot of people online just aren't believing what they are saying right now. When there is evidence out there to contradict what they are saying. Or is this a situation where the resort is lying? Either way you look at this thing, money is a big motivator. And if the Bahamas as a whole has a reputation where tourists are no longer safe, that is something that can absolutely affect their primary source of income, which is tourism dollars. So to say that the Bahamas doesn't have any type of reason to lie here is also not true. The vast majority of their income comes from tourism. At the time of this video, it is worth mentioning. The FBI is now involved and they're currently on that ship as this video is being recorded. And they are looking to gather evidence to see what is the truth and what isn't. But the one thing we can say for sure right now is that somebody is absolutely 
not telling the truth here. But I'm more interested to hear your thoughts on this down in the comments below. Other than that, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here. Y'all stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.